Mess Hall testimonial cricket match took place at the Queen's Park Oval on Sunday, January the 16th. The Prime Minister, at whose request the National Sports Council had arranged the game, was present to meet the players and to pay personal tribute to Wes Hall. The Oval, described by broadcasters and pressmen, as well as by international players, as one of the most beautiful grounds in the world, has been the stage on which many thrilling games of cricket and outstanding individual performances have been played. The Oval has a history of cricketing records. For instance, the first international cup tourney among the islands was played here towards the close of the last century, 1893 to 1894. Baron Constantine is dead, but his cricketing memory will long live on. It was in the 1934-1935 series against England, second test, that Larry showed his mettle with bat, with ball, and in the field, spearheading a West Indies victory by getting the Englishman Leyland out in the last over of the day. Sonny Ramadan, you will remember, made his first appearance here in a first-class cricket match. The Oval saw the debut of Frank Worrell into the international arena. Worrell later joined Walcott, another member of the famous W.O. Triumvirate, in a record stand of over 500 runs against Trinidad. This was in 1946. And the stand is still the second highest partnership in world cricket. Today, yet another record is being broken. The Oval sees today the first ever testimonial game in the West Indies. This game, arranged by the National Sports Council at the request of the Prime Minister, is between a Trinidad 11 and a Wes Hall 11, and is a testimonial to the great West Indies fast bowler and gentleman. I shall be speaking with selected young players whom Wes has influenced as well as with the international cricketers who played the game against Wes and with him. But first, let us retrospect a little. Let us see Wes in action. The scene, Queen's Park Oval, same place. Wes Hall opens the bowling against the Australians. This is in 1965. Kenna Black is the commentator. Now pace like fire. Eight West Indies fieldsmen crouched around Laurie as Hall bowls the first ball from the farm end. A long run up. But Laurie plays quietly on the onside, taking no chances. Smooth run up, nice easy action, finds the edge, but the ball falls short of Sobers at second slip. This one, wide of the wicket. Wes Hall on the run. Laurie plays at and misses an away swinger. The last ball of the over. Defensively played and Hall himself feels. Geoffrey Stolmeyer has been mainly responsible for Wes Hall's attachment in Trinidad and Tobago. Wes Hall spent a sojourn of some three years here and did extensive coaching among young uh, Trinidad cricketers as well as social work in the Lavanty area. Jeff, how did this come about? Well, it, it isn't, I wouldn't say that I'm responsible. I, I'd say I'm partly responsible. And the story of how Wes came here following the West Indies tour of England in 1966 is quite an interesting one. Uh, the team was staying at Oxford, we were playing there, but the rain interfered very seriously with the game. And on the Sunday, Jim Swanton asked Wes and I to go down to Taunton, which is some distance away, to uh, be at a, a presentation game there for Ron Roberts. In fact, Ron Roberts had died recently, and um, there was this testimonial match, rather like we're having today, 
for him. And on the way down, on the drive, Wes told us how he had enjoyed coaching in Sydney. And the idea occurred to me that we very, very badly needed uh, a coach in Trinidad to encourage the young players and get coaching key schemes started. This is something, Jeff, that we don't see very much of. Um, we're seeing a bit more now. But often in Trinidad and pla other places in the West Indies, there's a general lament that our top-notch professionals are not used in the country to which they belong. Is this so? Well, I think that this is becoming more and more so. If you think of Guyana, they've used our top-class cricketers for some time, and you'll find more and more that this is taking place. We've had Andy Gantome here for some time, Pusha Chong before him. But um, following on the Wes's uh, interest, I got in touch with the West Indian Tobacco Company, uh, which I was a director, and uh, they turned up trumps and fell for the idea, and this is how Wes came out here on a three-year three contract. And of course, arising out of that, the Wes Hall League started, and the coaching of the young players, who you now see out there on the field, so many of them. What year was this, Jeff? Jeff? This was in 1966. And how long did the attachment last? Just for three years. I think he stayed for an extra six months after that. And would you say that Wes Hall has made some mark? Oh, well, undoubtedly. Oh. Undoubtedly. He had the help of a very good organization behind him, and Wes has a great way with boys and tremendous ability to impart knowledge. And I think that these two factors and the fact that he's able to encourage young players is very important, and it's, it's, it's worth as it always does. I'm surprised to learn that among uh, those whom Wes has coached, there are batsmen, fieldsmen, as well as bowlers. How can you account for this? Well, any cricketer of Wes's experience would know a lot about every department of the game. He may be a fast bowler, but he'd know a great deal about batsmen. He's got to study the batsmen to get them out. Get them out. So um, there's no doubt about it that a, a coach, it doesn't matter what particular department he excels in, he's always able to impart knowledge in all departments of the game. Thank you, Jeffrey so much. Thank you. The clapping you are wearing, of course, is because Wells Hall is coming to take over from Charlie Griffith, who has just been out, run out. And here is Wes, that great West Indian, proceeding to the wicket. Here are the cheers of the crowd. Everybody in the northern stand stands for West Hall as he reaches the wicket. And here are the terrible twins, as they were sometimes called themselves, Wes Hall and Charlie Griffith. Wes, we heard from Jeffrey Stolmeyer that you have coached in Queensland, Australia. You've coached in Trinidad, I suppose. You have coached in Barbados and other places. Have you noticed any differences in approaches to players in the various countries? Well, yes, I would say that um, when I coach in Australia, I coach mainly in the schools, and uh, most of the coaching programs are in the schools. And to tell you the truth, I, when I visited there, it was in, in Sydney, actually, that I saw the under-16 under and the under-21 operated at a grand scale. And uh, when I came over to Trinidad, although most of my coaching uh, was spread all over the country, I, I found that it was necessary to have um, zonal coaching in Trinidad, which would give the boys outside of the, um, the city limits a chance to play competitive cricket. And um, I think this has borne fruit because most of the boys who are um, playing Trinidad or are at the verge of um, getting a play now, they are really from Chaguanas and as far as Point Fourteen, as far as in the east is uh, Arima and, and, and Santa Grande. And we have cricket now, organized cricket at all levels in most of the remote parts of Trinidad. I think this is the most important thing, to give everyone a chance. Without uh, taking kudos for yourself, how many of these young Trinidad cricketers on the field today have been influenced by you? Well, I, I don't know about influence by me. I, I think I have coached, with the exception of Joey Carew, Prince Bartholomew, and uh, Charlie Davis. I think the other eight uh, were coached while I, I was in Trinidad. And um, obviously, the older ones have been coached by um, others here in Trinidad. I came when most of them were, you know, not really established, but I, I would say usually good cricketers. And um, it was only necessary, really, uh, in some of the, um, the cases to guide them rather than coach them. Some of them were already coached. And um, the, my team, with the exception of Charlie, Lance, and um, Seymour, uh, the other eight, and myself, and the other seven, 
or were coached while I, I was here. So I would say out of the 22, about 16. That's a bit of cricket, that's a bit of cricket there that uh, excited the crowd. I was quite surprised, Wes, to hear from Jeffrey Stolmeyer that apart from coaching bowlers or fast bowlers, your influence has also spread to batsmen and uh, players in the field. How come uh, that you are able to do this? Well, I think the simple reason is that a batsman, a bowler must study all the batsmen while he's playing. And during your cricket career, you probably find that you know when people are vulnerable and where they're vulnerable and when they're strong. And you have to adapt yourself to these conditions. And because you have studied batsmen nearly all your cricketing life, you will find that you, you, you're able to look for the faults. And a young batsman, you can see them readily. And then again, I think that a man uh, is born to bowl, whereas a batsman can be made. Charlie, you have been bowling opposite Wells. And when I say opposite Wells, I mean bowling with him at the other end. And I think that it is well known in cricket that test bowlers, fast bowlers go in pairs, perhaps as good spin bowlers also. Is this a fact? Well, yes, it is, it is a fact. But I think that um, it has been a great, great inspiration bowling Wells for over a period of 10 years. I think that... Um, Why is this so? Because if you notice that um, Wells is really puts everything into it and when you're out there and you see Wes coming from one end, you have you said to yourself, well, all right, if he's coming from this end, you have to try to, to do the same thing that he's doing. And therefore, this is the sort of inspiration that any one bowler or fast bowler can get by bowling with Wes. Now, apart from the bowling aspect, how has Wes been as a member of a West Indies team? Because this word team is very important. It's teamwork when you get out on a cricket field and one has to give and one has to take. How have you found Wes Hall? Well, in this respect, I have found him very helpful because and, and he's very helpful on and off the field and he's always willing to help not only a bowler but any sort of player that he can give us his assistance to. And, and he goes on like this and I think that um, Wes is really an asset or was an asset to West Indies cricket and I think on and off the field he has done West Indies cricket a tremendous amount of good. Not only because of that um, I was his bowling partner, but this, from what I've, what I've seen, I can say this for us. Wes Hall, what would you like to see in the future for West Indies cricket? Well, I would like to see us regain our rightful position at the top of the ladder. Uh, I think that we are people who love the game, uh, who play um, naturally. And I think that as long as we give our youngsters the, the necessary um, coaching and the chances, I think that we will really rise to great heights. We are in a transition period right now, but this is only temporary. In my opinion, I think if the youngsters get a chance, as they are really doing here in Trinidad, it really blesses my heart to see so many youngsters coming on and playing at such a great level. And I'm quite sure that Charlie would agree with me that if we can do this at a regional basis, including, of course, the Windward and Leavers, a place, uh, places or islands which I think a great majority of our, oh yes, I think that they will produce a lot of cricketers. And um, I don't know what Charlie think about this, but I, I am confident that if we bring them into our on the 19 VAT series, and if we spread our coaches that we have got through the islands to help them, I'm sure that West Indies will be all the better for this experience. We've got three young players here from the Trinidad 11. Keith DeRail, Larry Gums, and Dudnath Ramkisoon. I'm going to ask each of them to tell us in their own way how they met Wes and what sort of influence Wes had on them as cricketers. First, Keith DeRail. Well, seeing Wes for the first time in Digger Martin, when Digger Martin and the 19 team played Trinidad batting, I had a good knock on that match. And I felt how many runs did you make? I made 76. 76? Yeah. Well, you made 43 today. That's a very good knock today also. And um, I felt the coach, we're still coming to speak to me and tell me, Keith, you have a lot of potential. So we better keep on practicing. Someday I might get on a train at a 19 team. And I did. And I, up to now, I'm still get on. I had a good, well, I had a good youth days with um, train at a 19 team. Did you have any coaching from Wes himself? Yes, sir. In what, in what aspect of the game? Well, to bowl. He taught me to bowl this or swing and, and swing and all these things. And I did ask shots, but free to, uh, free to play shots, and he came to me and said, Keith, you have a lot of shots. Gave yeah. you the confidence. Yeah, he gave me the confidence to play shots. A lot of good shots. Larry, what about you? Whom do you play for? <laughs> well, I play for Queen's Bar Cricket Club and Arima Sporting Club. Arima Sporting Club? Yes. And what happened with you and where? Well, first of all, I met him at a coaching session at Arima. And then, well, from then on, well, I decided to take up the game yes, more seriously. Mm -hmm. Well, 
after that coaching session, you know, I decided that, well, with his coaching, you know, I decided, well, I think I could maybe, you know, someday I'll be able to maybe train that size. Again, know? some question of confidence building here, yes. huh? Yes, or maybe Western, Western side in the future, you know. Very good. But he influenced me a great deal, you know. And you're still hoping to make that West Indies side, are you? Well, yes, I'm hoping. How soon do you give yourself to make it? Well, I say, well, next four years. Next know? four years. Yes. Good enough. Well, um, Coach Wells all taught me a sense of competition, discipline, self-respect. And he was really a great inspiration to me all. What about the game itself? Well, as regards the game, well, well, well most of the time I was captain of the team. I all went along as manager. And always, he always gave a word of encouragement, you know. He was always one of us. He never, well, any time he did anything wrong, he was always there to encourage us, you know. Just try and do better, how to do it, and everything else. So he's had a great influence on the whole team as, a, as well as upon individual players. Well, yes, on the whole team. I must say that um, all the West all the years in Trinidad, there's hundreds of us, he has influenced them all. Dudnath Rampisoon, whom we've just spoken to, was captain of the West Indies youth team to England. And with that tribute from these three young players, we are going back. Uh, to the game. Jerry Gomez is the chairman of the Promotions and Public Relations Committee of the National Sports Council. Jerry, uh, the National Sports Council did organize this testimonial game for West Hall at the, re at the request of the Prime Minister, I understand. Yes, Sydney, and uh, I think that two very important points have emerged out of this exercise which has been organized by the National Sports Council. The first is that it has given the opportunity for the Prime Minister, the government, and the people of Trinidad to show their appreciation to a fine man for having done a fine job for the youth of Trinidad and Tobago. Secondly, and more important still from the National Sports Council's point of view, and my own committee's point of view is the fact that it advertises in no uncertain manner the wonderful value to be derived by commercial organizations in sponsoring sporting activity. Uh, the sponsors of Wes Hall, the West Indian Tobacco um, Company, um, sponsored Wes Hall and in so doing I think they have achieved, as this is the saying goes in the business, um, a terrific amount of mileage out of having an outstanding personality like Wes carry out this particular job and he's done it with great success as we all expected him to and it will have lasting value throughout Trinidad and Tobago for years to come as we have seen from the number of outstanding young cricketers which we have produced in the last few years. You're seeing that today Jerry aren't we with some very stylistic bats batsmen out there the crease the Wes are they Trinidad youth team playing uh, against the West Hall 11. Yes, I'm sure Wes himself must be very, very pleased. pleased yes. And uh, this points again to the fact that we can multiply this sort of thing throughout the length and breadth of Trinidad and Tobago. And we once again echo the, the call by uh, the government of this, company, uh, this country, more recently by the Minister of Finance in his budget speech, whereby the happy marriage of government providing facilities and the business community providing this kind of sponsorship. Um, we can do an awful lot for promoting sport and uh, creating well-being in the, amongst the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And uh, I think and I strongly advertise to the business community uh, that sport is probably the very best vehicle for both public relations and publicity as has been demonstrated very clearly by what has resulted in you know, what has culminated here today and uh, therefore I again appeal to the business community of Trinidad and Tobago to play their part um, in that there is full reward and full value in any such sponsorship for sport. On that note of tribute to Wells Hall from a fellow player, fellow test cricketer Jerry Gomez, we bring this program of the National Sports Council to a close. Mm -hmm.